Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to Black Arrow Gaming. I'm Bob, and we're back for uh, the third episode in this series, um, unless you count the first one that I had to restart. So uh, we're back for another episode of my Halfling Battle Royale. In the last episode, Bilbo got smacked. He tried to land on my beach over here, and I, I killed his whole uh, main leader stack, six units, without losing anything. So feeling pretty good about that little victory. Um, took some damage, but my unit should patch up fairly quickly. And we're going to see if he continues pushing or if he backs off now that he lost his leader. I think he might back off. I need him to go fight somebody else so that I can focus on Mary. Um, we're also in the process of getting a uh, guardhouse, and then we're going to make a bunch of dirt cheap farmers in one turn apiece. And they throw chickens, which is a nice, very long-range physical attack. My theory is that with a big enough group of halfling farmers, I can take out a lot more stuff than I in theory should be able to. And I could also use the throw chicken to snipe heroes and stuff like that. So I think a horde of these guys could be really, really handy. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the plan. And we just need to go to the next turn because I have already reinforced my spells that I can. Whatever spells I can reinforce. How does Mary have time to friggin' try to disjunct Inspire Loyalty? He's not doing anything. We need to keep an eye on Bilbo. Bilbo backed off. I should have looked at his units earlier, but it looks like he's backing off, except for those two. I think they are retreating as well. Yeah, they're, they're definitely sailing west. Okay, we got guardhouse here. Now it's time to just spam halfling farmers. I think I want like, I might want like a full stack of these guys. They're really pretty good. Um, even for a tier one. And then, let's see, what else might I want to work towards? The gladiator pit would give me access to the, oh man, that would give me access to the war breed. No, okay. I'm going to focus, I'm going to make three halfling farmers. That's the plan. I'll get three halfling farmers. They can flush out and give me a two full stacks of six. And then from there, I can maybe think about war breeds, which are going to be really expensive, but I could also get phalanxes. Um, oh wait, but I need to research that stuff. That's right. We'll see where we're at in three turns, and then we'll, we'll kind of reevaluate what I want to build next. But uh, I would have to get the Berserker first. And I already do have a Warlord's Command. I probably need to start working my way down this path, actually. Yeah, I really do. I was researching Garrison's Honor, but I think getting Berserkers out in three turns will be more important. And I have buildings and bonuses that'll give them a benefit, so... So yeah, I think I need to do that. Because I can also make them for cheaper. Alright, so for now, we hold ground reinforce spells and wait until those farmers are done then if Bilbo isn't bugging us again already by then I think I'll go down towards uh, Mary and see what he's up to so we go into the old uh, menu over here find inspire loyalty reinforce my spell I'm going to be spending all of my mana doing that pretty much every turn for a while now I think and we just end the turn while building up a bigger army. No, I can't take Draconians. I'm sorry. I require another type of hero, but I'm never going to be able to get one unless I can convert one from somebody else. Because you're not a halfling, and there's no non-halflings allowed around here. Okay, got my first farmer. We'll go ahead and uh, throw... Well, he can stay where he's at for now, I guess. Doesn't really matter. Um, go back in here. This is really... I, I don't like just passing turns by so quickly here. Okay. But we'll go out on a little adventure here shortly. In fact, the farmers should really be... Yeah, the farmer should be stacked with um, with the Theocrat, now that I think of it. Because he's got that sacred arms. And aside from the chickens, they're a melee unit, so... 
We'll make sure they're with him because they get some benefit for their melee strike. And we'll leave all the ranged units with Sam. And then maybe we can give Sam a uh, ranged command next time he levels up. Um, that would probably be pretty good. And then have each army specialize and Theocrat's army can specialize in melee and Sam's can specialize in ranged. I think that seems like a good strategy. I don't really have any better options right now, so. But now that I know Mary has those eagle riders, I just, I have to make sure I have some farmers on hand. A dwarf Theocrat, man. I guess require another type of hero. And we'll see if maybe, it, maybe one of them will lose a halfling and then another one will pop up. At this point, I don't care what half like pops up, I would take it. Uh, another farmer. I'll move you down here. And move the uh, slinger back. There we go. And we'll get one more farmer. On the next turn, we'll move down towards Mary again because I have not seen anything out of Bilbo. And I have towers watching Bilbo, so I'm going to know if he's coming. Mary is harder to tell. Now, should I have another building queued up after this, just in case? I mean, it doesn't hurt, I guess. Um, I'm gonna queue up a laboratory. The faster I can research more powerful units, the better, I think. The temple does give me the Brew Brothers. But I don't think I want to go that route right now. Even though the extra mana it gives would be nice, because then I could still be making some on the side. Right now I'm spending as much as I'm getting just to reinforce spells. Speaking of which, before I forget. It's so tough to decide what you want to build. But I think uh, probably... Nah, probably not the Eagle's Nest. I actually think Eagle Riders are a little underpowered. I don't know if I'll even mess with them in this game. I think, I, in fact, I probably won't because I'm a Warlord and Manicore Riders would just be so much better once I get to the point where I can make them. Um, uh, maybe the Siege Workshop? I don't know. That would let me build... Three turns, two turns. City grows in two turns. No, I think I would be... That might be worth it. Yeah, let's go ahead and throw that in. Just maybe I'll get lucky and get it. Um, the Gladiator Pit, like I said, doesn't really do me any good yet. Because the... Um, because of the... I can't... I guess I have to research War Braids and Pikemen. So it doesn't really help me yet. I think... Maybe go for the Siege Workshop and then possibly the Temple. Because I am going to need surplus mana from the Temple to build things like the Gladiator Pit and the Laboratory and other things that cost mana. Um, the Siege Workshop, you know, the more I think about it, I don't think that's worth 150 gold right now. Gold's limited. Um... I think the temple might actually be the next best choice. Because it gets me the extra mana income that I need to work on some other stuff. And this is all the mana I have to work with right now, so it's not going to get any better. Yeah, I think the temple is the right choice right now. Alright, hopefully it puts the... Um farmer where I want him, but I, I kind of doubt it will. I wanted to put him on this stack, but we'll, we'll see where, it's, where it puts him. Alright. Uh, cast spell. Can't do anything there. Alright, let's throw down a quick save in the turn. Oh, it did put him in that stack. Okay, good. That's what I wanted. Perfect. Is this a... Oh, man, that's a dwarf. For a second, I thought she was a halfling. This is going to get annoying, honestly. I'm just going to have to keep ignoring heroes until I manage to get one. Wait. Planetary alignment just triggered. What did I just get? 
Oh, man. That one actually wasn't going to take very long. I mean, it's not bad, though, because now I can make some berserkers. Because I already have the stuff I need for it. So it's not the worst thing that could have happened, but that was only a three-turn research. And these guys, it actually would be useful to have. You know what I'm going to do? Because when the city grows, I'll be able to make berserkers in one turn. I think what I'm going to do is use this turn to make a scout. Just so I have someone that can go down and explore in places that I can't send the rest of my armies. And actually, a scout right now would also be really, really helpful. Just because... Um, wait, hang on. Do I start with Partisan? Or is that something, an empire upgrade I have to research? Or whatever the, the one is that makes units invisible when they're not stacked by themselves. No, you start with Folk Hero. The other one you have to research. Okay, so for this turn, we'll make one scout to go off by themselves and explore. And then on the next turn, we should be able to make Berserkers in one turn each. Because the city is going to grow. And I'll have a little bit of extra gold income. I'm still kind of bummed that that triggered... I would have much rather gotten Garrison's Honor with that. Uh, the next up is Monster Hunter, which is not really what I need, but it gets me closer to Mounted Archers, which are actually pretty good. You gotta go through all these in order is the problem. I almost wonder if it'd be better to just get War Effort for the extra 10 gold, because that's that would be a significant portion of my gold income. I think I am going to go ahead and just get War Effort. The Berserkers are good enough for now, but I have to research all the way through Monster Hunter, then all the way through Cavalry Archers, just to get um, to the units that I really want, which are the War Breeds and the Phalanxes. Although the Cavalry Archers, like I said, are not a bad choice. They're actually pretty good, and the Halfling ones are going to get a range damage bonus on top of that. So, maybe that is still worth it. But no, I'm going to stick with War Effort, just because gold right now is going to become an issue. Right now I'm mitigating it with the Inspire Loyalty, which I think was a really good call to get that early. Um, speaking of which, got to keep remembering to reinforce it. And then I think at this point we gotta go take a swing at Mary and see what he see how he responds. At least we've got farmers now to deal with eagle riders and dare I say manticores if he somehow already has them on turn twenty. I wouldn't put it past an emperor computer to be honest. I would absolutely not be surprised if I see some phalanxes and war breeds down here. All right. Bilbo's probably going to be like, oh, I can tell his capital is undefended now and then come running at me as soon as I do this. But He's just a little jerk like that. Um, I'm going to kind of just go for it here and sort of charge. I'm hoping... I haven't seen or heard anything out of Mary for a while, so I'm kind of hoping that he went off to fight somebody else and I can run in real fast and maybe snipe his city. All right, that's the best I can do for now. I am going to queue the temple, I guess, just in case of an autocomplete, um, which is very unlikely considering the city's only at normal happiness. And then after that, probably need to make some berserkers. Got it. I, I, a lot of times I, I don't build units that much this early, but a Warlord, especially in a close quarters game like this, you really have to. So, all right. Well, it's end the turn. and uh, Mary's borders is screw again. I got to do something about this guy. Mine grew too, though, so that's good. Um, nope, can't. Can't do it, lady. Can't do it. You're not a halfling. Okay, uh, this guy... 
I want down in this area, I think. Um, he doesn't need to necessarily help fight, but I do need him to help scout. We'll probably... Although I'm... I can't wait for him. I kind of have to charge in. Especially now that Mary's borders grew, he's going to know that I'm here. I'm really worried about what I'm going to find in here. For now, I'm going to send one. Just Pimpton. Got to make sure I leave him with at least 18 to back out if he needs to. It's looking pretty okay so far. I think what I'm going to do is maybe park it like here so that I'm on the vegetation. And I think that's Fertile Plains under the mine. So I can park one army on the mine to disrupt his income a little bit. And the other on the trees. And then the next turn I could rush his capital. I can't get everyone to his capital on this turn. Unfortunately, they're all just a little bit too far away. Um... But we can get close. And he might reinforce it. And if he does, then maybe we'll have to fall back. But and what's Bilbo doing up here? Nothing out of Bilbo right now. I think I smacked him back pretty hard. So, All right. That's the plan. Um, move up like this. Position Theocrat army here. I can take a peek and just see what's in his capital. Right now, a stack of six, and he's got stone walls. Oh, I don't have any way to breach those walls. I need battering rams. Oh, that's not good. I need battering rams, or I need to get the siege workshop and make trebuchets. Trebuchets actually... Oh, wait, nope. That's not technically a halfling. How am I supposed to do this? Is the, the trebuchet is not, doesn't have a race associated with it, right? I don't think it does. I don't think trebuchets or battering rams. But that would make the city practically impossible to breach. Yeah, it's just a trebuchet. It doesn't have any others. Oh, man. Does this kind of ruin my challenge? If I can't even build trebs? Because it's not a halfling unit. And they would I would abuse the heck out of them is the problem. Because I would use them to target units and do tons of physical damage. Oh, this sucks. Okay, uh, I think I need a different plan. I can still build laborer units. So I can make builders, because those are a race unit. I think I need to shift focus towards getting a second city, running my economy up to where I can get flying units, like eagle riders, um, or war breeds that could knock down walls. Dang it. If I could make siege, I could probably take that city, but... No, we're gonna have to back off. That's against the rules. I made the rules, I will abide by the rules. If it's not a halfling unit, I don't use it. But maybe this will trick Mary into sending a counter-strike at me, and then I can... Maybe kill some units or something, I don't know. But I think at this point, I really need a, a, to get a city over here. So, knowing that, that's where my scout's going to go look around to see what else is down there. And then I have to think very carefully about what I make next. I could go for the eagle nest, have units that can fly to get over the walls, but I think I probably really need the temple um, because of all the expensive mana stuff I'm going to need to build, like the gladiator pit in particular. The war breeds do have demolisher, right? Can they break down walls? Units. Halfling war breed. Wall crushing. Yeah, they can, they can break walls. 
Mm. Still have that pesky physical weakness, but... I think I really got to push towards Warp Reads and higher level Warlord units, because I won't be able to... Everyone's going to have stone walls at this point. That's probably why his borders just grew, actually. Crap. Maybe I should build stone walls. Honestly, it probably wouldn't be the worst thing. But... Alright, I think... I think I need to let the city grow a little bit more for like three more turns because I don't want to lose the growth that I just got um, by making a settler now. Instead, what I think I'm going to do is make a builder and then a stone wall or maybe a stone wall and then a builder. I'll probably do that. I'll do stone wall and then builder because the stone wall will let me reach more food sources and will help with defense. And then I can queue the builder after that. Then by then, the city will have grown enough that I can make a settler without lowering the size. And the builder can start making a road to wherever the scout decides my next city needs to go. Oh, this is all so much more complicated and difficult. Okay, gotta remember reinforce the uh, reinforce inspire loyalty, since they have already demonstrated that they don't like me having that up, and I very much need it right now because I'm saving a lot of money. I have two full armies, and I'm only paying 28 gold per turn in upkeep, so definitely need to save that money. And getting another city down here will give me a lot more gold that I can work with, so I've already got some of that stuff cleared. All right, that's the plan. Because I can't breach stone walls, not with all those range units sitting on them. I do kind of hope, I do kind of hope Mary chases me. Mary won a battle against something, I don't know what. What is that? Oh, he's way up here. He's just killing independence in a tower, I think. Can't really tell. Oh, crap. All right. Well, let's see what the scout can find down here. They have a vision range upgrade, right? No, they actually don't. Interesting. Ooh, there's a trade post down here, and Mary already cleared it. And a dungeon. Ooh, okay. I'm thinking a city right here. Gonna be aggressive placement because of Mary being nearby, but that would get me the trading post right away. Or, yeah, right here would give me the trading post and a gold mine. That would be a ton of gold. That is, that is what I'm gonna work towards. Maybe I can get more cities than him, and that's how I, I, I outpace him. In the meantime, these guys got to fall back uh, to capital defense in case they are needed. And we got the stone wall in one more turn than the builder. And then we'll go ahead and... Well, we can't queue the settler yet because that would cause the city to shrink. So we'll have to wait until the builder's done, I think. Because I think it spends the population up front, if I'm not mistaken. We can actually check because you can undo it, but... No, it actually doesn't. Okay, so I can have that queued up and ready to go. All right. Click to in turn. Oh, wait. Hang on. Hang on. I always know there's something I'm forgetting. Reinforce again. And now in turn. Okay, there's the stone wall. That's going to help out with growth. That's good. And just general city income. Well, actually, I don't think that affects the income. That just increases border size. I think the 
title of whether it's like a town, village, city, metropolis, whatever. I think that's the only thing that actually affects the production income, as far as I know, anyway. Um, all right, stone wall, good. Uh, and I have to decide how I'm going to split up to defend these cities. If I build a road going through, though, I should be able to run to either one that needs help. Um, I'm going to have the scout look for a cave entrance down here. Okay, there's none there. Unless that's one. The shape of that rock made me wonder. No, that's not a cave entrance. Are there even cave entrances? There's got to be. A small map would still have cave entrances. What does this guy have? Uh, swimming, mountaineering. Not improved mountaineering. He's still going to be faster... Actually, he can make it there pretty quickly. Okay, I'm just going to leave him snooping around in this little corner. And for the moment, uh, I want that builder to spawn in that city. So I'm going to position these guys like this. And then we'll dump the money into a road to get down there. It just feels like there's more I should be doing on my turns, but there's really nothing I can do. This is going to be turtling a lot this game for a while. Uh, overview panel. That inspire loyalty now. Now I've max reinforced this, and I can start reinforcing uh, the other one. And if I can get both of them fully reinforced, then I can actually start making mana profit. Okay, and in turn, oh gosh, someone else already has a metropolis, awesome. Okay, well, my builder's done, so uh, there's that. Um, I'm going to build the road, probably, it's got to go right through there, so I'm going to build it out like this first, so it's like behind the city, and then down in like a straight line. Fortunately, we've got the gold to afford to do this. For now, the armies can stay where they're at. Um, and, oh hey, there's another... Oh, that guy's gonna chase me. Okay, well, the armies can't stay where they're at. It looks like this guy's gonna need an escort, which is fine. Doesn't look like anyone's threatening my walls right now. Okay, um, let's see. You're going to have forestry, but you're not going to have mountaineering, which means I can outrun you in the mountains. In fact, I'm going to go over here. Then after the settler, I need to decide what I want the city to do. Probably the temple, I think. And then I can start splurging on things like the laboratory and the gladiator pit with a little extra mana income under my belt. Unless I want to go for siege workshop and then make 75 turn stuff in one turn, which actually isn't really going to help me out a whole lot, I don't think. Now, I think... The Siege Workshop would really only help me build, well, really, the Temple faster, or the Siege Workshop, anything that costs 150 public baths, but I'm not going for that right now. The Laboratory is going to be two turns anyway, the Gladiator Pit's going to be three turns anyway, An Eagle's Nest I'm not planning on building, so yeah, the Siege Workshop does not really help me out here. Yeah, we'll keep it at that. And go back to our good old Reinforce that we have to do every turn because the other people are being mean and trying to take away our spells. Or they were anyway. They haven't actually tried to disjunct it in a while, to be fair. Okay, uh, save the game.
game again and go to the next turn. At least Bilbo hasn't come back after I put him in his place. Hopefully it stays that way. War effort's almost done, and once I get a second city up, that's an extra 20 gold per turn. That's not bad for a game like this. Eh, I think you're going to get trapped down here, my friend. Too bad for you. Okay, let's build the road like this. Let's go straight down like that, and then we curve back around the mountain. Go back and right to that spot right there, I think. Nice aggressive placement. Maybe to this spot, and then it'll grow. Puts me a little bit further away from Mary. May give me longer to grow. I don't know. It would... Because being here is going to put it really close to Mary, and I think it might be a little easier to defend both cities if it's slightly closer to me. And this also puts it closer to the other gold mine, so as far as income goes, it kind of balances out. So yeah, I think that's going to be the spot right there. Oh, I can only move where I can build where I can see. All right, buddy, you are trapped, sir. In fact, I think I could chase you down with the cavalry. Yeah, because Pimpton's gonna have one extra move. I'm spending a little bit of money to do this because I split off the farmers from the rest of the group, but how much of a difference is that really gonna make? I don't think it's gonna be enough to matter. 73 gold versus 60. Yeah, I'm spending six gold to kill a unit. I think that's probably worthwhile. I should have scouted out closer to this thing, though, first, just in case he had more units around here. All right, let's put uh, the rest of you here. Can launch the actually the scout could launch this attack. I don't know why I turned off cast spells in auto combat and that went into manual combat. Holy crap! Ouch! Bro! I forgot halfling monster hunters get fireworks. Um, well, we can't have that nonsense. Uh, let's see, I can charge you. You actually are a bit of a disadvantage. And I can get in your face. All right. I am going to do this. I'm going to send this guy around and then just straight up charge him. Ooh, ooh, all right, nice. Okay, that makes me feel much safer about what I'm about to do. Um, which is back the Theocrat off and just have him heal. These guys, can they sprint? No. Okay, apparently not. Jeez, he almost one-shot my poor, uh, my poor scout. All right, then I can get him kind of a little closer to this group. I can actually get the scout with that group. So more units in one spot, probably for the better. Um, but they're going to be mostly hanging out in between the two cities, I think. That being said, if I get a city here, I could easily build a tower here, which would be very, very nice, uh, because then that would give me advance warning of when... Mary is coming, and I already have advance warning of when Bilbo is coming. That would be extremely useful. So, I think I'll probably do that. Two reinforcing scales of fortune.
Oh, he just tried to disjunct and spile loyalty again, you little punk. How bad of damage, it took it down to 100. Well, I guess I'm going to be stuck continuing to do that for a while yet. All right, well, we can get our settler coming down. With the fact that I basically have to constantly be reinforcing spells, I think sticking with the temple is probably a good idea. The city's happiness just reached very happy, so that's great. Um, if there's anything I would like to get in one turn, it's probably the siege workshop or the gladiator pit. Uh, but I think for now we'll take the siege workshop. Public baths would be nice too, because then I could transition into hospital and get lots of happiness bonuses but uh, I think we're gonna go with the siege workshop we will need it eventually just not quite yet and if this finishes and I don't get it in one turn I'll probably switch it to something else probably a laboratory uh, okay well settlers done uh, Mary sucks at disjuncting spells and I can get just one more road because that's where the city's going right there and then I think I'm going to go ahead and stick that tower probably right here. That seems like a fairly safe spot for it. Yeah. Is this worth building? It's only 40 gold for a tower, so I think it is. And just for this turn, while that guy's building, I'm going to move my armies, get the armies grouped back up the way I had them, and then move them together. So I think uh, having you guys here, Bilbo's army is the same as it was. So we need the farmers here. And... You guys here. Okay. And then the scout, I'm going to send off on a very big adventure by himself. Uh, he is going to go probably try to run around on the mountains and draw some of Mary's units away. Because apparently Mary's willing to chase him down. He sent the lone monster hunter after him and just got the monster hunter killed. So maybe I can exploit that. Just protect that guy while he makes that. I may need to rush, like, walls or something in this city to make sure I get that gold mine. There's also this dungeon down here, which is scary, but I probably should try to clear that. That could give me a nice reward. I'll probably do that on the next turn unless Bilbo starts getting aggressive up north again. Part of me wonders if I could just leave the builder alone at the watchtower, whether he'd be okay, but the other part of me is like, now I need to guard him. Actually, I could do both. I can only take one group in that dungeon anyway. Um, which one do I want to take, though, is the question. Probably the Theocrats group. Because sometimes there's manacore riders in those. You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to move Sam here, send this group down here, and try to see if I can maybe clear that dungeon. We just got to take a peek and see what's in it. I would have looked with my scout if I had thought about it, but I, I messed up. All right. Well, back to this. It's Mary's being a little pest. Okay, next turn. I just hope Mary doesn't hit with a huge army here. By themselves, Sam's army will probably be okay. But if Mary sends something real big... Oh, he's going for my city again. But it's just the one group. And that's it. There's nothing else nearby. Oh man, that's a nice watchtower. Okay, that makes me feel better. <laughs> Um, I'm going to get the builder back to the road. 
I don't have time to build the wood walls, unfortunately. Oh man, I could have. I could have moved one, two, three, and... Hmm. I don't think it's worth it now. I think I would rather just plant the city and start reaping the benefits of the gold income um, and growing. I might even hurry production of a storehouse. I should have moved down there and built a fort. It's fine. We'll just get the city. We'll just get the city down. It's too late now, I think. Alright, well, since he's running up here and Sam's army is more ranged heavy anyway, better at defending, Sam's army can go back, probably. Well, I'm going to see what's in the dungeon first. Somebody's army has to go. In fact, Sam's army is going to go back regardless because I have to protect that city. I wonder if Sam himself could run around and... No, I can't quite reach the haste berries. Unless I got creative with the builder who can't move anymore on this turn anyway. All right, let's send the uh, let's send the theocrat in here. See what we got down here. I'll move just him for now. That way, if I decide this is not worth attempting, oh man, that's doable. But I'll probably lose some stuff. Because I've got three farmers that counter half of this stuff. I think that's doable. Enough so that... Because I can always just build more farmers. I think the reward I get out of this, which could be a really hefty chunk of gold, would be worth it. So I think I'm going to try this. Plus, I want this cleared anyway for whenever the city's borders can reach it. Yeah, all right, we're doing this. Closely matched. I do have my casting points, so um, in case I need them, they're there. All right. Oh, they're going to make me lure them out. Okay. Not the worst thing that could happen, I guess. I'm going to give Touched by Faith to... I wish I could just give it to my own hero, but I can't. Guess I'll give it to just one of the pony riders. I'm gonna be using them to deal with the berserkers while everybody else deals with the flying stuff. Regardless, should get it up and going soon. The farmers can pretty easily force stuff to come at them. And I probably wanna spam throw chickens all at once. If I can, because once those uh, flying units get close, I'm going to need those pikes. So I probably will go right up the middle. How far can the griffins fly? They can fly pretty far. But as long as they can't get behind me, I think this would work pretty well. Like, my guard would technically be down, but if I'm going to risk anything in this battle, it's the farmers, so... Okay, so on the next turn, they're all going to take one step forward. The Griffin Riders can't get behind them, and I can leave a pony on each flank with my hero in the middle ready to assist whoever needs it. And I also have Divine Protection and Smite, plus my leader does have Berserk. I think that's unlikely to work very well, but it could come in handy to just try to mess something up if things go bad. I don't know, I think I might be able to do this without losing anything. Throw those chickens, guys. None of that reduced his movement, but I guess that's okay. Um, the Manicore Rider, where are you? How far can you move? Which one is... Oh, Manicore Rider's right in the middle. The griffins are actually the ones on the edges. 
That's why I didn't do much damage. I threw everything at the Mana Core Rider, which is probably fine. Um, yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> this is uh, this is the plan, I guess. Uh, he's got that high elf stun, but I've got my halfling lucky, and it's coming in clutch. <laughs> Okay, Pony Riders on the edges, you guys got to deal with those Berserkers, and I know they're going to need some help. Um, do I want to try to kill this Manicor Rider first? I think I want to get the flanks on it. Yeah, I want to get... I think I want the flanks from this guy. Alternatively, I could just defend, but I don't want him flying behind something, because he could do way more damage if he gets behind my lines. I knew that might happen, but that's okay. I can finish him off with my Theocrat now. And I can move this guy up and at least keep those Griffins from flying behind stuff. In fact, I might just go all out and attack one. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Ooh, nice critical hit. These guys have extra critical chance, the farmers do, because I built them after researching Scales of Fortune. Okay, these guys can get behind and flank my leader, and I don't like that, my hero. So I'm going to move like this to where they at least... Actually, I could block this one completely if I move here. Then can he hit me twice? He can't. I don't like that either. So we're going to make him choose between rushing down... Oh, wait, no, hang on. That's a very bad choice. No, we need to, we need to force them to go after the ponies. We cannot let... Because the griffin could technically ignore everything here and fly over and pick a fight, and I cannot lose that hero. That would be possibly the end of the game. So the pony riders are just going to have to take some punishment. We can get them back if we need to. Okay, they're going to go center, which is good. That's the best outcome, I think, um, is letting the letting the uh, farmers take the brunt of the punishment here. And we can run around behind him, turn the berserker around. I could then go pick a fight with the griffin. Or I could go assist with this berserker. I think I'm going to assist with the Berserker. That's a free hit, basically. Who do I have left? Just you two. Okay. Is anyone in a position where the Griffin could kill them? I don't think so. Except for possibly the Farmer, if I don't play this right. The Farmer could kill the Berserker. He can't make it over to kill the other one. I think the farmer might be crippled. Yeah. There's a small chance he could kill that unit. We're not taking it. I will probably build up a charge here because I think that will be a guaranteed one hit kill. Yes. Okay. That takes care of him. Then I can kill the Berserker. The Griffin might kill the Farmer here. But that's okay. Like I said, I was willing to sacrifice those Farmers to do this. Oh, hey, he wants the... Okay, well, that's one less Farmer I'm going to lose. Because I can just patch you up. And now you're standing right behind a unit with a pole arm. Not good news for you. Okay, those were perfectly acceptable sacrifices. Ooh, I got a halfling brew brother and an ogre. Um, okay, so I decided that if this happens, I can I can take the reward and I can keep the brew brother, but I would have to get rid of the ogre. 
I would just have to disband it, like, before doing anything with it. So basically, my choice is, do I want a Halfling Brew Brother and 153 gold? Or do I want to take 332 gold and just make my own Brew Brother? Which, the question then is, how much does it... Oh, wait, I have to decide now. How much does the Brew Brother cost? Doesn't tell me. I don't think I can see from this menu. I'm sure it doesn't cost over 150 gold. I think I might just take the money. Having a halfling pop up is kind of lucky here. Especially a brew brother. But... I think I can put the money towards better things. And I already have actually a pretty good amount of healing on the units that I do have. Oh dang, that is just a that is just a tough call though, because I can use nourishing meal to buff people's health to ridiculous levels. I think I'm gonna take this, just because I don't think training regimen actually benefits support units, and it would probably take me at least two turns to build one. So I also have to consider the time investment. So I am gonna take the reward, and then just disband the ogre. Although, if I do that, will the ogre become just, like, wandering around? I don't normally disband units, so this is kind of unfamiliar territory for me. I'm just going to take the money. I'm just going to take the money. This early, that almost doubles my treasury this early in the game. I think that's pretty good. Um, I do, however, need to get more farmers in now. So I'm going to let the temple finish. I'll keep the siege workshop queued, but when the temple's done, I'm going to make a couple more farmers. And then I can make brew brothers of my own if I feel like I need to. All right, guys, start heading back. Um, you guys definitely start heading back because they're coming at us with another brew brother. And I think that's it. Partisan army, there's there's one that could be good for my scout, but it's definitely not worth 20 turns of research, that's for sure. Um, Garrison's honor, probably, or back to reducing units. I think we gotta get back to the units. Okay, uh, Theocrat leveled up again, level 5. I need to make sure I have 9 points at level 7. So I can spend all my points on this level, and then I need to only spend 1. So I get, basically I can spend 6 points before getting Convert and Healing. And I have to decide whether that's whether I want to do that or not, or how I want to do that. Aura of Resistance is solid. I really like that one, but it might not be as useful going up against a Warlord. Um... So I don't know. I may pass on that. Mighty Meek could come in handy. Mighty Meek actually could be really helpful. Because if he gets Manticore Riders and Eagle... Like, I already know he's at Eagle Riders. If he gets Manticores before I do, that could make the farmers that I'm making way more deadly to the Manticores. I think Mighty Meek is actually a pretty solid choice here. And then since, well, that'll take all five, but um, it also only costs seven. So even with 15 casting points, he can cast it twice. All right, I like that choice. Let's uh, just stay in the mountains. Maybe run down here and irritate Mary a little bit. Like, ooh, there's a unit in your borders. You better do something about it. And then I want to see where that guy goes. Okay, we, we can reinforce. Um, reinforce Inspire Loyalty again. Hopefully he backs off. I hope he does, because um, that would reset the temple production, and that would be annoying. Let's find out what he does. Yeah, he backed off. All right. Oh, 
Oh man, his borders, I just realized Mary's borders grew again. He must have cast his spell that grows them. Well, now this borders are, growth is already constrained now. I really would like to grow it to get that, um, is there a quick way I can do this? I think the fastest way is probably wooden wall, stone wall, which I most likely need anyway. I don't know, maybe if I build the storehouse fast enough. That's an extra plus 100, that would let me do it in like seven turns. I don't know, I might be able to get that. His borders have grown so fast recently, he's got to be almost out of border growth options. I'm sure that's a, probably a metropolis by now. He may have cast Authority of the Sword. In fact, I think he did. You can see with those... I think it's that little blue light above his city. I think that's what that is. Or maybe... No, I have one above mine too. Maybe that's just signifying it's the throne city. I don't know. Like, one option is to hurry production of wood wall, hurry production of stone wall. Which isn't a terrible option, considering how close the city is to him. How much would that cost me? 150 gold, then another 150 gold. Is that worth it? I mean, that's 300 gold for hurrying production to get one gold mine. Would take 30 turns to make in make a return on that. That's a long time. I think I'm just going to build stone walls normally, or at least build the wood walls just for defense sake. Um, and then we'll decide what to do after those are done. I'll queue the storehouse in case maybe I get really lucky. And then what do I want to do with the builder? Um, there's not really anything else for him right now. I can't even make a fort anywhere safely. I mean, I guess I could build one over here, but that's just going to constrain the city growth more. And it will get me a little bit of extra mana. I mean, I don't know, that might be a good spot. I can always tear it down later, but it costs 100. So whether I get 10 turns of benefit out of that, plus I would be getting the mana though, and that's still useful. It might be worth it to put a fort right here. And then I can just get rid of it when the borders grow, because it's gonna take longer than that for the borders to grow. Uh, I should have taken the time with the builder to make the... I should have taken the time with the builder to make the, the stone walls. Because that could actually be done very quickly. But I, on the other hand, I am making 30 gold a turn now. But I would have been making that from the fort. I don't know. I, I think it would have been a better call. I think in retrospect, it would have been better to just make the fort. Um, and get the, get the stone walls in there probably should have done that. All right, well, now I'm regretting that, but we're going to build a fortress here. Um, it will constrain city growth a little bit, but city growth is already constrained, so... And I kind of need that money. It is 100 gold. Okay, I am willing to make that expense. Just for even a little extra mana right now, every tiny bit helps at this point. Okay, I want you guys back in this city. Or actually, they don't need to be in the city. They just need to be close enough to get to the city in one turn. So um, I'm going to leave them probably like just on the road here. Hanging out at the Magma Forge. I guess we can move them down here for now, just so the armies are together. I almost don't want to go too far with the scout, though, because if I meet the other halflings, they could all start trying to disjunct my stuff, too. And I would rather have them fighting each other, so I may intentionally not scout much. The main thing I'm looking for is a cave entrance. I would like to get underground, um, but I, in also in retrospect, I don't think that's going to matter much because I don't have easy access to a cave entrance. So even if I could get underground, the best I could do is treasure pickups, which I guess is worth it. Because there's going to be chests and stuff underground on the water. 
like the floating chests. I don't know. There's just a lot to think about this game. Oh, I forgot to, I forgot to reinforce the spell again. Oh, they tracked my, down my scout. Maybe I can do this. Uh, if the scout dies, it's fine. It's not the end of the world, but. Let's see, I think I can lure you into doing something dumb, probably. Yeah, I'm just gonna hide behind the trees over here. Not really any helpful spells. I just have to do this the old-fashioned way if I want to make it work, but I've got sprint, so... Here's a flank attack. Oh, frick. He crit and I got and and got lucky on he crit and got lucky on the same turn. That is the, going to be the nature of this game, I'm afraid. Well, so much for uh, getting a scout underground and looking around. Oh, Sam leveled up. Okay, good. I wanted to get him uh, ranged command cuz he's got a ton of archers in his army. And probably will leave the other one undecided for now. I'm using him as both melee and ranged. Maybe we'll give him more melee strength. What's he going to get at five? Let's look at that. Level up. Uh, Warlord, level five. Gets charge command. That doesn't really help much. First strike is nice, but it only affects him. Phoenix Warrior is good. Phoenix Warrior is very good, but it, and it only costs five, so I can get that regardless. There's also just, yeah, I, I think I think I'll, I'll go ahead and upgrade Sam's melee strength a bit. Wait, actually, I just got a bonus to his. No, I, I'll 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 do melee because he's the only melee unit in this army, so he needs to prepare be prepared to fight. Uh, hand to hand a little bit if he needs to. All right, hopefully that fort right there that I, that I put is worth it. Um, yeah, <laughs> I guess we can build one more road to connect everything up. Okay, does that technically have a road on it? It actually does not. Oh wait, yeah, it does. Okay. All right. Hey, I'm trying to deselect the unit. Leave me alone. Um, I guess at this point I need to camp for a little while. My economy's stronger. I've got significantly more gold income now. In fact, I could pretty easily get it above a thousand and get the wealthy empire bonus. But I have to protect my cities. So I think uh, for the moment, my best bet is to stay here and be ready to jump on either city if I need to, to protect it. I just don't know exactly where the best spot is to position my units, but it's probably something like this. And we can just leave the builder on the grass for now. He's not, well, actually he could go with them because it'll be slightly less upkeep. I did finish the temple and did not get a happiness bonus, so we're gonna flip this to fill in the two farmers that I lost. And then probably queue up another siege workshop, I guess. I did get a Praise the Leader Festival. Oh, hey, 169 gold. All right, well, I'm glad I didn't hurry production on the last turn, because I probably would have gotten that if I did. Sweet. I'll take that wooden wall. I might hurry production of the stone wall. If the wood wall builds normally, if if I can still grab that gold mine before uh, Mary gets it. It's kind of hard to... Well, I don't know. I think the stone wall would just be worth it in general. I might end up getting, getting rid of that fort earlier than I intended. We'll see. I'll, I'll leave it where it is for now, but 
This is like the best I can do. This is my empire. Like I'm just stuck. I can't go anywhere else. The only other possibility is trying to build a bridge across the river and building behind Bilbo, but that's just gonna make it more likely that Bilbo fights me and I don't care about Bilbo right now. I wanna fight Mary. So things are getting crazy. All right, well, before I go, let's go to the overview panel. Oh, reinforce, inspire loyalty again. I gotta remember to keep doing that. Um, and then we are at the end of the turn. There's nothing I need to cast. All right, guys. That's three episodes. I think we're off to an okay start. I feel really pinned in here, but on the other hand, I don't feel like I've made any major mistakes aside from forgetting to reinforce uh, global spells a couple times. But I think that overall, um, I'm in about as position, a good a position as I can be, given the uh, cramped circumstances here. <laughs> So we got to assume the others are fighting too. So it's not going to be just me versus the world, which is the one saving grace of this series, I suppose. But that's going to be it for this week. And like I said, I am gone next weekend visiting family out of town. Uh, so there will be a little bit of downtime there, but then I'll be back at it um, towards like a little bit later in February. Um, and we'll get some more episodes cranked out. Hopefully I don't have to restart this one again. Um, thanks so much, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, I hope you are enjoying this so far. I'm actually really into this. This is genuinely super interesting to me just because this is so different from any other Age of Wonders game I've played uh, just with how cramped it is and how I'm having to build more units a lot earlier and that kind of stuff. It's really interesting. So I I'm genuinely enjoying this. But thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you all next time. Special thanks to all my Patreon supporters, including Tier 3 supporters Blitz, Braden, Dawson Horner, Jimbro, Sarah Feingold, and Tarsac. Thanks so much, everybody.